Welcome along to Critical Disability Studies at Manchester Metropolitan University and today I'm very, very pleased to be interviewing... Hello, I'm Claire Blackburn from the University of Warwick. And I'm Janet Reid and I'm at the same university. Great, well thank you for agreeing to this interview. The first question is, could you tell me a little bit about your current research, um, some of the things that are cropping up and perhaps maybe how that is kind of adding to our knowledge within disability studies? <laughs> the area that we've been working on really is trying to get better data on disabled children and their, their households in the UK um, because there has been an absence of really good data that people that could be used by people who are trying to pro provide services right. and that could be used by policy makers um, so that they're likely to design really effective policies for disabled children and their families. What can't, sorry, do you want to come in there? Yes, I was thinking that although there's um, a lot of good research about the experiences of disabled children and their parents, um, one of the things that um, became apparent um, not so very long ago is that large scale data that was really reliable about the circumstances they were living in, and that means some of the barriers that they faced and so on, um, that was what there was was out of date and so right. we decided that we would um, try to fill the gap a bit. And try and um, complement really the sort of very rich um, seam of qualitative studies that we've got and complement that with some more quantitative data about people's lives that people who um, who are designing services actually need um, to be able to have estimates for example of mm. how many people they may need to design services for etc. Yeah. That's interesting because it reminds me of uh, the point that Tom Shakespeare makes in his controversial 2006, I think, book, where he talks about actually that, the, yes, there's lots of qualitative research in yeah. disability studies, yeah. but not enough kind of quantitative. Yes. And would that be a kind of view you would share? Yes, I think so. I don't want to denigrate the qualitative work. No. In fact, both of us have done and continue to do qualitative work but we think that we there needs to be work that draws on large data sets particularly for planning purposes and so that we can be absolutely we can get a better idea of the pattern of people's lives and the circumstances that they live in and that different groups of people do and be um, have um, more robust information about that um, in a way that's really in the interests of, of disabled people because quite often service providers are planning things on a hunch right, and, right. And, and disabled children and their families deserve better than that really. really. Yeah. And as you know, Ron McCullum was saying yesterday, to be able to monitor the, con the UN Convention on the Rights yeah. of Disabled People, you actually need some quantitative data as well as qualitative data and there is an absence of that. How would you respond to the statement that um, families with a uh, that have uh, disabled children actually have it better now than they did 10 years ago? Well, the current um, data that we've been looking at and analysing actually says that that's not the case. Um, that disabled children in the UK are still um, one, one of the very poorest groups in the UK. And that actually if you look at within the group of disabled children, there are some groups that are even poorer than others. So some of our recent research has been looking at um, um, differences within the group. So for example, um, within the group of d disabled children and their households, Households that have both disabled adults and disabled children are some of the poorest right. of the poor. And they have, if you look at what their medium incomes are, then they are much, much lower than, um, for example, disabled children who are living in households whose parents don't have um, right. a limiting long-standing illness or disability. So there are differences as well mm. um, you know, between not only disabled children and non-disabled children households, but also within that group of disabled children. And it's really important to unpack that. And, um, you know, it's, it's um, sort of in 2000, you know, Dave Gordon said that disabled children are the poorest of the poor. Our data, um, which was looking at, his data was from the 80s, I think. Yes, we were looking at data from, from um, I think, 2004, five recently still shows that this group are the poorest of the poor. Yeah. Right. And when right. you look at um, their, they, have, they score high, 
higher on um, deprivation um, indicators than other families. And when we're talking about deprivation indicators, we're not talking about um, exotic or ambitious things. We're talking about the sort of things that we think every child should be able to have, like um, to be able to afford to go out to a hobby once a month, say right. swimming or something like that, or to have another child back for a tea, or and to have more than one pair, more than one pair of shoes, things like that. Very, very things that most people would agree every child should have in the 21st century. And a lot of disabled children um, are much more deprived than other children. Right. I mean, I just want to kind of uh, um, one question. I mean, we've, as you know, we've been doing a project and that. And what our question was, um, does every child matter? <laughs> what is your sense, then, about the current state of play for disabled children? And, and we're thinking about Britain here. Are we still in a case where, uh, in a situation where disabled children are facing a kind of form of apartheid? Um, or do you see any kind of reason to be a bit more cheerful, as Ian Jury would uh, perhaps put it? I think that government programmes, since with all any reservations, Setting aside um, some reservations that you might have about the programmes that have happened in relation to disabled children, uh, I think that um, awareness has been raised about certain things. Certain ideas have become more commonplace and acceptable at public level than they were ten years ago. But our problem, the problem we have, is and, I'm, and is with this, is that. The, um, the things that would make a difference um, are not bedded and on the ground yet, are they? Right. So you might say, well, people won't regard it as such an exotic idea anymore for a disabled child to um, live, um, have access to the things that other children have and to live an ordinary life. But there's a great difference between uh, the idea might not be exotic, but on the ground mm. it's still very, very difficult, and the gap between disabled children and, um, and other children is still huge in terms of opportunities, mm. and for their families, of course. Yeah. yeah. So some of the people watching this video will be uh, students, will be undergraduate and postgraduate students yeah. interested in researching um, family life and disability. Do you see any kind of uh, themes within uh, those, their lives that, that require urgent need of research or attention that you might want to encourage some of those students to look at? I think one of the things that I want to say is that poverty and poor living conditions should never be an also round for any practitioner. And I worked with um, social work practitioners and um, post-qualification and social work um, students for a very long time. So those things about poverty and what that does to any child um, should never be an also round. They should be addressing those and their effects should be an integral part of practice, not only of policy but of practice at the face-to-face -face level, appreciating what living in abject poverty does to children and their families has to be part of your everyday working life. Add to that what people are up against because of um, the experience of disability, and I think those are the sort. Of, those are if you have to be a, if you can't be aware of anything else, that interface between poverty and disability should be on the agenda for every professional. Really, there's lots more, but those two things would be my top top box. And I think um, you know, one of the things that we're really interested in is trying you know, trying to unpack this association between childhood disability and um, socioeconomic disadvantage right. and there's really very there's some work being done but there's lots more to explore there trying to look at you know what is it why there's this um, sort of dynamic interrelationship between them and trying to unpack we, you know we're trying to do a little bit of work there but I think there is there's more work to be done and yeah. and some of that work need, needs to be quantitative so I think I want to say there is a place for quantitative researchers yeah. in disability studies